In today's show, well, it's a bit of a different show. It's YouTube only, and we're looking at Basketball Monster. Draft tracker, features, all of that stuff. Michael Bolton, he's still here, though. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. All right. So we are here to just do a little bit of uh, a discussion on Basketball Monster. You all know that I work at Basketball Monster. I say it at the start of every show. What is Basketball Monster? It's a fantasy basketball site. Uh, the basis of what we do is projections. I have projections for every single player in the NBA. You get those projections and you customize them to whatever your league is. However many teams your league is, however many roster spots your team is. Um, are you doing a category league? However many categories you're using, what categories you're using. You're doing a points league. What are your formats there? There's nothing generic about what we do. So people ask, hey, do you have points leagues rankings? I have projections and they all just get turned into rankings de depending on how you want to set it up. Hey, can you do this for an auction? Yeah. Can you do things for Roto? Yeah. Can you do things for ESPN points? Yeah. All that stuff. I don't put out a generic list. It's not me going in there, well, I think this guy is 20th and this guy is 21st. It's about projecting every single player's stats, balancing them with everybody else on their team, minutes, games played, all that sort of stuff, turning them into projections. Now, our projections at the moment are based on the standard Z-score format, which I talked about later on. We are going to be introducing my new Durant metric as an alternative option on the site. And Durant stands for Dynamic Unbiased Rankings Applying Normalized Transformations. Because Z-scores work on normal distributions, unfortunately, fantasy stats aren't normalized, uh, aren't normal distributions, they're not bell curves. So sometimes the Z-scores can provide warped results. So with my Durant metric, what we do is we go through and we uh, apply formulas onto the stats to make them normally distributed to enable a better comparison between categories. Is it going to be foolproof? Nothing is with category rankings, but I think it gives a little bit more validity. It means that guys like Giannis aren't ranked outside the top 100. It means Jaron Jackson isn't ranked inside the top 10 or top 12. Because when you're comparing standard scores across different categories, the non-normal um, distribution can put some of those numbers out of whack. So that's what Durant is. It's applying a, a transformation to make the stat set normalized and then standardizing it to enable comparison across categories. We're going to have that over on Basketball Monster. I'm going to show you the draft tracker. I'm going to show you a bunch of different features that we have over on Basketball Monster at the moment. Plus, we have the robust, um, uh, what do you call it? The robust uh, player comment sections, um, forums, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to go through and just show you a few little basics over on Basketball Monster right now. Warnie. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here is the front page of Basketball Monster. So you can see uh, play a news section, um, some draft kit articles there. Again, we're not really, we don't focus on, well, here is four sleepers that you look at because we want to really be more custom. And you can just tell by going into our projections page and having a look at the different things that are available and seeing, oh, this guy actually projects to be way better than what he looks like on my provider of Yahoo or on ESPN or on Fantrax or whatever. And in my specific settings or my specific punt builds or my specific point scoring categories, we put all that stuff there. You've got a user comment section in the middle there. This is just the front page. And then we do advertise what our top 10 per game and total numbers are uh, up on that screen over there. Again, that doesn't really pay, uh, mean a huge amount. What I do want to show you, though, is the way that we go in. And one of your first things you do is when you become a Basketball Monster member is you go and click that settings button right there. So you can see that settings button up the top. You go in there and it leads you to this page. So I'm going to just push add league to bring us to the default page. This is really simple stuff. I, th I think it is. Fantasy provider. We're going to do Yahoo. 
but you can see all the different options there. CBS, ESPN, Yahoo, Fantrax, NFBKC, um, Flea Flicker, Sleeper App. It's all different there. All the different position eligibilities. We'll, we'll, we'll put, uh, put Yahoo as one over there. All right. What we will do, we'll do, and you can see there that the auction mock that I did the other day is already, because I've already authorized my Yahoo account. It links in. The Yahoo, it, it drags all your leagues across. So I've got that code. And I'll show you what that code is in a sec, where to find it. But it will automatically bring the code across. I'll put 24921 in my league ID. Um, and if I put, uh, I'll put save there. And then I'll just push import settings. And it will bring all of the settings from that league in across onto here. So we go 14 teams per roster, number of um, players per team, 12. All of the standard categories are over here. There's a bunch of other things we can do here. Automatically update rosters. Is it Roto or head-to-head? -head? Daily changes, weekly changes. Um, Roto games cap limit, weekly games limit. Um, quality game numbers, playoff dates, auction budget. So do 200 there with, you know, say 40 or so. Let's say 50 for $1 players for an auction. And that adjusts all of my different settings. So when you go in, it's one of the key things you can do. If you're in a points league, you look over to the right or middle of this screen where we're at. And you can see um, there's a use points per stat. You click on that and you put your scoring in. So if this was a Yahoo default points league and I pushed import settings, all these numbers would come across straight away. But this is a category setting. So I'm just going to type in the Yahoo default numbers and change them to points leagues and do it that way. Save it. And then they're all there. But you can see we scroll down and we can see all of the different categories that we have uh, available over here. Again, we are going to be putting the Durant metric in here this later. And hopefully we get my Bazemore Dynasty rankings formula in there for some beta testing this season. But this is the number one page that you want to go into on Basketball Monster. I'm going to show you now how we look and get that... Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? I can't even think now. The, the league ID number over for Yahoo. So here's just the main screen for that same um, Yahoo League. And if you look up the top there in the URL, there's a five-digit code at the end. That's your league ID. The same thing happens on Fantrax. The same thing happens on ESPN. There'll be a code, but we've also got that description over on Basketball Monster that shows you how to get the code or it automatically links, links up and you can just type that number in. So we do have that. That's how we go, and get, uh, go ahead and get that um, uh, league code, which enables all of the auto-updating and auto-population stuff to come through. So we just bring it back over now to the Basketball Monster page and have a look at where we're at with that. And then we're back on, on that settings page here. So that, all that stuff is auto-populated. And you'll see there I've got the points per stat. I've got a bunch of menus up the top. If I go to tools and go to player rankings, this player rankings is the numbers from last season. We can go across and have a look at how all that shapes out. And it will show you a bunch of stats using these points per stat that I've got here. Um, with a bunch of other things here. Yahoo average dollars, um, ADP numbers, um, total value. There's there's a lot of data that gets presented on the screen. I've probably got too much up there just for my own purposes, but we have all these different um, columns that you can set here with like display columns, which when you click this, you can choose to have certain things on like this monster bar, minus one value, fantasy points per minute, punt columns, um, player age, draft status, uh, usage rates, start percentages, uh, advanced roster percentages, um, box score comments that we write every day for players, all the different sites, ADPs and all their data. And then we've got the other uh, section here, the edit value columns, where you can use comparison. So you, you might be setting things to per game value, as you see that little drop down at the top, but you can also put Kyle's projections or my projections, last season's rankings, what, we, what happened in the last game, the last five games, the last week, what we're looking at for the next week in projections, the short-term projections, how we're projecting fantasy playoffs as well. And you can that's what all these little columns are uh, in the middle there, where it says Josh G and Kyle G, all those different valuations of players. So we head across back to settings. I'll go back and hit the import settings button and this will change this back to a category league setting. And then I can go in here and set punts if I want to. So I will always personally set turnovers to punt. I'm actually at the moment setting free throws to a 0.9 weight. I'm setting steals to a 0.7 blocks to a 0.7 and threes to a 0.8 to account for variability um, and low volume of those things. All right, so this auction mock draft has already occurred. So we've seen, seen that happen already. So we can go in and have a look at a bunch of different things here in these menus. So you've got player rankings, there's team analysis, schedule analysis, uh, trade analysis, NBA lineups is starting lineups when they get confirmed. There's the box scores, live results. So we update stats as they're happening. 
lists of hot players, not Ricky Rubio, that sort of thing, players who are on a hot streak. In the members sections where we have projections, drafting tiers, our Trade Monster, which is a uh, updated or upgraded version of Trade Analysis. Analysis Monster is a great way of just looking at your team and the league overall. Projected Standings, we've got Smart Tool, which helps you with who we're going to add and drop for the week. Um, advanced but Percentages, um, Depth Charts, Daily Projections, Weekly Projections, a head-to-head daily tool when you've got daily changes of how you put guys in and out versus your opponent, see where you match up against them weekly. Um uh, weekly lineups to set your lineup for the week, who's going to give you the best result against your specific opponent for that week as well. Like if I go into the head-to-head daily tool, it should bring up and I can say, well, my team here is load one, Josh Lloyd's nice team. And then I could pick another one. Let's choose Kingy from that auction and choose load team two, put him in there as well. Now we don't have our daily projection set yet because we're still six weeks away from the start of the season, but we can go in here and look at the schedule and say, well, okay, on the first day of the year, there's got three teams, three guys uh, playing. So we'll select, make sure Wiggins plays. The next day I've got 11, so I can't start everybody. And I know Miles Bridges is going to be out. So let's make sure that the other guys are selected. Pat Williams, the same over here on Thursday. Select those guys. Um, and then we've only got seven guys playing these other days. And let's make sure they're all selected. Then we can go down to Kingy's team and have a look as well. Or we can just do this select all players option. And then it would you know, end up giving us a result of who it predicts to win and lose. And we don't have that yet because I don't have all of the daily projection numbers. But you can do this for every matchup that you have uh, during a week to see to see how it looks on the screen there. Um, I might take that frame away there so you can see a little bit more of, of the different teams and the different teams and, and the way that we set up um, our, our weekly matchup tool. And we can do that for all those different uh, options that we have there, the head-to-head weekly, head-to-head daily, all the different um, like usage monsters, something that we have where you can look at the value of players when certain guys are on and off the court. We have all of that. What happens to their, all of their rates and all of the different lineups for all of the different teams. So that's one of the things we have there. We can go to this team analysis tab up the top, choose whatever team we want here. So we can go there and have a look at how my squad looks from that from that auction. It based it on the averages that we project them out to, what their numbers all look like. Um, you can use total stats per 36 stats. You can auto active inactive. You can set to add replacement games for any games that the guys are projected to miss. So adding like a random waiver player to the overall stats. All that stuff um, will appear on there. It's also the analysis monster that we can do uh, as well to provide a, a bunch of different value for your team and projected standings. And Smart Tool will give you ideas of how you improve your roto standings and all of that stuff throughout the season. All right. So, I mean, that one, I've got the code here, 2571921. So I have to take that and take it back across to Basketball Monster. So we've got that code. We take it back across to Basketball Monster on the league settings. We push add league. So I'm going to use that code that I copied, save it in there, import the settings. All right, so how many teams is this league supposed to be? It's another 14-team league one. Um, all right, so if I make sure that, because not everyone's joined, so it says I've only got uh, 11 teams, so I'll put that in there, which if you waited for it to fully, uh, fully fill, then that would automatically populate. I'm going to set my punts up here which I always want to punt turnovers when I'm looking at a draft and I want to downweight some of the smaller volume categories like steals and blocks and threes to those particular weights. And that'll set us up there and we're now waiting for this draft to start in two minutes, which you don't have to wait through the two minutes. All right, so this draft is now allegedly loading. We go across onto Basketball Monster. Um, So we've set the settings up. Let's go to Members and do Draft Tracker and that'll bring the page up for us. And you'll see at the very top, the first thing you've got to do is make sure that your ID is there. It says, use my ID, which is the league ID that we found on Yahoo. So put that in there. It will populate. Or you can just type it straight into that league ID box at the top as well. That's there. And then whenever you want to, after each pick, you just hit that refresh from Yahoo button and it will update the picks. Now I'm picking at pick one. Enter your snake draft order to see your pick numbers. Let's just hit one there and it will tell me what all my pick numbers are in this 14-man league. 1, 28, 29, 56, 57. Got all these different things at the top I can filter by. Uh, players who are restricted free agents, unrestricted player options, breakout candidates, two-way guys. My punt f- settings up here that I can do. So I can choose which categories I want to punt during the draft. And I can adjust weights as I go as well. 
I can do this ad replacement games, which, you know, for say like a Jar Morant, who we might have projected at 45 games, what does he look like with 45 games of Jar added on with the remaining games filled with waiver wire players? What sort of player does that look like? Where does that position them? So you can do that for those sort of guys. You can toggle that on and off during the draft as well. You set whether you want to use per game value or total value. I will always use per, uh, to- uh, per game. I can't predict injuries at all. It's impossible to do. So I don't want to be basing my numbers uh, off that. All right, we're heading into this draft now. As you can see, I'm pick number one in this mock draft. I'm not going to do the full... Um, actually, what I'm going to do is turn off draft sounds. I'm not going to do the full um, pre- presentation mode. I'm just going to show you how some of this stuff works. Um, if we go back to the draft tracker page, you can see the minus one column, which gives you an idea of the player's value minus their worst category. So if I can, I can sort by that as well, especially for the first round to see sort of how these guys position themselves. It doesn't change much, but it does move Giannis all the way up. When you take away his free throws, whether I want to take him at three, I probably don't, but I could, and it just changes the valuation of a bunch of different guys, which I think becomes really interesting when you're in a um, when you're in a draft. And you'll see that when we make picks, there's also if you see over here, there's name, team, and then there's this note section, but there's also this my column, right? So if you want to do manual draft tracking, if you click that little box next to a player, it puts them onto your team. If you click the box next to it and then put refresh, it puts them onto another team. So if your draft does not include auto tracking, like some leagues don't, that's a way you can do it. Let's go back into here. We're 17 seconds away from me starting, and I'm going to take Nikola Jokic over in this draft. We might look at the first round or two just to show how things populate uh, across, especially the first round. Actually, a lot of people in this mock at the moment. All right, clock's running down. All right, let's just take Big Chungus at number one. All right, so let's let a few picks go off the board here. Then we'll go back to draft tracker. So Jokic, Embiid. I'm sure it'll be Doncic next. Oh, there you go. Then it'll be Tatum or Shea. Or according to Yahoo Draft Scout, they want Desmond Bain to go there. <laughs> Al. Um, uh, Halliburton goes fourth. So we go, well, while this is cracking on, let's go back to draft tracker. And we go here. And if we push that refresh from Yahoo button, You'll see the guys at the top of the draft, Jokic and Bede, they disappear from that player list. Once once that refreshes, it's gone through, they're gone. My team analysis is in the middle here. I've got Jokic, and it tells me what all, all the values are of my team. And then once you get projected standings, you must complete one round before viewing projected standings. But you'll see that those guys are off the board. And every time I hit it, other guys move off. So we've got five players. It says, out of 182 total players that need to be picked, five have been taken. I've got one of my 13. This is a 14-team head-to-head league. 3% of the draft is done. We go back across here, and we've had a couple other picks go. Tatum at five, Shea at six, Curry at seven. I can come back onto here, hit refresh, and you'll see those numbers change, and you see the valuations change. Now, if you go up to the team analysis section on this draft, it will say summary versus top players, which is like if... You know, we compared it to if, say, the top 180 players got drafted, how would my team look versus how my team compares to the guys that have already been traded, uh, already been drafted. The greens are big positives. The reds are negatives. The brighter the green, the bigger the positive. The darker the red, the bigger the negative. And yeah, we'll show how that goes when we get back at the end of the first round as we go through this. We've only got a couple more picks to go. And we'll show how that all updates and in real time. And then it shows the valuation of players uh, on that screen. Now, there is another option you can choose. If we go back to Draft Tracker, when you go to the Edit Display Columns section here, there'll be a option over here that says Dynamic Value, which I'm going to take Positional Value off. I don't really want that, but I want Dynamic Value there. And what Dynamic Value does, is it gives you a valuation of the player based on who's been taken. So are they someone who's got a, very, a more rare stat set, which is this column here next to the name, Dynamic Value. And you can have a look to see where the valuation of someone like um, if you go to that list, like Lillard is a little bit more valuable than these other guys based on the scarcity of some of his skills that he provides. And that gets more important later on in drafts. All right, so the first round is done now. And what that'll bring me to, if I go push the refresh from Yahoo over on Draft Tracker, and then you'll see projected standings come up. The first round is done. So I am sitting there in the middle with Nikola Jokic. It tells me who my head-to-head, if I battled the guy, Brandon, in fourth, I'd beat him 5-4 on average. I'd lose to the other top three players, and I'd beat the majority of guys there below me. Interesting that I had Jokic, and we compare them to Zek, who picked it two or three, that he actually beat me one-on-one with that player. So that, that's interesting, yeah? Again, head-to-head's not about being strong in every category. It's got to beat them in certain categories. That's, that's a little bit interesting. 
go back across the draft. We'll go through the first two rounds here and show you how things update when we get around to my pick. Um, so we can update the top of the board when all these players go off and I can see what I want to do with Jokic and who's going to be available at that spot. But this is how your draft tracker works the same way you're doing auctions or points leagues or whatever it is. It all works this way. Okay, so someone's obviously taking the piss because Tyrese Maxey went at 21. Um, good for them. Good work. Clearly a clown, but that's fine. Um, this is why when I do mock draft shows, I don't jump in public mocks because... Who cares? Like these, these guys don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> that's what to me. That's what ADP data is for to tell you what the general public is doing and stupid shit like that. Zek, who was the man that was on top, who did he take? Who did, did he actually take to put him number one on my projections? Shay, that's interesting. Fred Van Vliet goes Zek, my guy. Just take someone, man. No one cares. Ah, so he did go Desmond Bain, the most recommended player on Yahoo. Why did I say it that way? Yahoo. Jim Harden at 24. We're getting back to my pick at 28. In 14-team leagues, man, it's a long stretch to get through to that one. Now, what I'll do, we're a couple of picks away. I might go and have a look just at Draft Tracker now, refresh from Yahoo, and see what my options are going to be. Because it does tell me how many picks away I am here. I'm three picks away from my turn. The top of the list here is Kawhi, Paul George, LeBron, Zion. All tons of risk. Now, Zion, that's because I'm looking at minus one. But if I don't want to look at minus one, that's fine. But Cade's there. Do I take Paul George? Do I take Kawhi to go with Jokic? It's not, not bad. It is risky in a head-to-head league. Is Paul George worth a look at that spot? I think he might be. Do I take Cunningham? And do I take Cade and Paul? Maybe I'll do that. I don't hate that mix. But, you know, it's really... It's not about who I'm taking. Well, Paul George just went, so I can't do that. It's more just to show you the way that things will adjust. And you'll see that dynamic value number adjust again as it's getting to my turn. One pick uh, to my pick. Kawhi still sits at the number one guy there. Or maybe I will take him and I'll take Cade to go with him. You are next. All right, Corin, make your pick. All right, LeBron goes at that spot. So it is my selection. So I'll take Kawhi and then I'll... I might take Cade first. So he just, he just joins my team in round two. I have to scroll right down. I'm never going to get him on the way back. So I'll take Cade there. And then I'll take Kawhi in round three. Let's roll it back over. Let's hit the refresh from Yahoo button. It will tell you that I've got three players, but the standings will only reflect my top two picks because it waits till everyone's got an even amount of players. But you can see my team. You can see my strengths, all the greens there. You can see that when I'm compared to other teams, though, my points and threes are a little bit lower because Jokic isn't as high a scorer as Steph or Shea or Embiid or Luka. He's not that high of a scorer, but yeah, I can make that up later as long as I'm not drafting big below average players later on. That's how my team sits. And then after two rounds in standings, yeah, Richie goes the top here. I'm in the middle. Again, part, there's, so, there's very little difference to that. My idea in drafts is usually to try and gain value through the middle rounds and push up. So I'm not, I don't actually care. Like, well, I took Jokic. I couldn't have done anything different to pick one and I'm okay with taking K there. Like, there's no other great options in that position that I could have gone with. Um, yeah, maybe I could have taken a Markinen who apparently is ranked 10 on Yahoo's uh, list or Brunson or whatever. That's not really the point. It's just to show you how all of this um, stuff works over on Basel Monster. So that's how the draft tracker works. If you do have specific questions about some of the features on Basel Monster, let me know. What I will do actually is I'll show you um, on Basel Monster. We'll go to the tools and we'll go to the trade analysis. We do have an upgraded version of this for members, but we can go in here and we can just throw players uh, if I give Giannis up in a trade for, let's say, Kawhi on the other side, hit it there, hit Analyze Trade, and then it will show us the relative strengths and weaknesses. It gives you an overall valuation. If I traded away Giannis and got Kawhi, it says I would gain, but I would also lose in points, lose in rebounds, lose in assists, lose in blocks, lose in field goal percentage. It's why I think that overall Z scores can be a little bit misleading, and when you're not including punts and valuations, it gets a little tricky because... Obviously, Giannis' valuation there in free throws drags down that overall evaluation. But if I had Giannis, I'm actually better in five categories versus Kawhi in four. Oh, yeah, you keep... Well, you, well, it depends on what you look at, right? Not five, sorry. Giannis gives me uh, points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and field goals. Yeah, five. And Kawhi is threes, his steals, his free throws, and turnovers. Two categories which I didn't really care about if I had Giannis. 
So while, again, that tells me that Kawhi would win, nuance is important. Throwing the punt categories on up the top there is important, and understanding how your team uh, can come out of things is important as well. I just wanted to go through and show a little bit there on Basketball Monster to show you how it works, how we run things. Um, there's plenty of other things that we do over there as well, and we're going to be introducing new things and more member features too. The Draft Tracker is a mem member feature as other projections. You've got a little bit of sneak peek at some of the stuff there, but that's how it connects. That's how it works. It's one of the best things you can do, I think, when you're in the draft. I do want to tell you, though, that today's episode is brought to you by Ibotta, so we thank the guys over at Ibotta. And when you're spending money, whatever it is, food for a cookout, new wardrobe for a change in season coming up, you're already spending that money. So why don't you get cash back at the same time? Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of items, clothes, grocery items. You might save up to 120, you might get $120 back in a year. And you can use that for a nice dinner, a show, a flight somewhere, whatever it is, Ibotta gives you cash back. It doesn't give you points, which can be useless at times. It gives you cash straight into your bank account, to your PayPal, or in the form of gift cards. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKED when you register. Go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code LOCKED. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or App Store and use the code LOCKED. And that, guys, will do it for this YouTube-exclusive only show. Follow this podcast if you want the other ones. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. You thumb it up and you leave your comments down below. Please leave them. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.